I did both of these, computing with Minecraft and coding fundamentals. I did computing with Minecraft for my sixth graders, and I did coding fundamentals for my seventh graders. And um, my inclination was correct in regard to that. Um, computing with Minecraft really allows for there to be a lot more creativity, whereas the coding fundamentals, although they're both great, the coding fundamentals is a little more structured. Uh, this computing with Minecraft is what I did my lesson plan on. The framework that I have been studying for this degree has been the TPAC framework, and I find I think that Minecraft education is a great way to combine technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge, mainly because of authenticity and uh, enrichment. Now, the computing with Minecraft is broken down into five units. The agency is really where you get started you eventually build a city and plan out a city which uh, utilize some coding uh, concepts that you're learning like loops and uh, conditional statements also some other um, terminology like nested loops more specific loops eventually this leads to a zoo uh, where you build a zoo uh, basically just using the same uh, information that you're learning in previous units but just applying it in a different way and in a more confined space and then um, it culminates with wind power where you actually build a mechanism and that's powered by redstone so you you animate this wind uh, mill by uh, making components and then powering it with redstone, but think of a much better way to uh, implement project-based learning. And what I'm really excited is me learning more about Microsoft Make Code, which is the coding um, language behind all of this. It's a block-based coding language, very similar to Scratch. But you can build games with Make Code and I know next semester Project Lead the Way has a curriculum based uh, and built around micro bits, which are which you code by using Microsoft Make Code. Challenging problems uh, or questions, very challenging material. Authenticity is very authentic. Well, it gives you lots of uh, student voice and choice. It's great with collaboration. Uh, in particular, in, in uh, kind of in line with that student voice and choice. I mean, Minecraft is a sandbox game, so it's great for student voice and choice. Um, reflections, that's where you as a teacher come in a little bit more. There are some assessment tools like cameras and portfolios, a book and quill. So you can assess in game by using visuals and uh, have them document their work as well as reflect and write. Uh, there is a component for that in-game gallery walk, so you know that is a important component that I did incorporate into my lesson this first round of, of uh, the way that I can think about uh, publicizing it very uh, easily would be to talk to, uh, put it out on the web, social media. Um, there is a lot of terminology and concepts for them to remember and for them to apply. That's really where you as a teacher come in in regard to building on previous knowledge, uh, understanding, and building that understanding. But where it really shines is applying it. You're applying uh, concepts and ideas, specifically programming concepts. Uh, you can help analyze, breaking down information into components and parts. I mean, that's really what a series of instructions and algorithms are in regard to programming. So I mentioned about the gallery walk um, and really gives them a way to shine and show off their chops, you know, um, really gives kids the ability to show what they're interested in. I had a, a one student that's really into baseball. He built a baseball field. He really got into it. It was really nice. So another uh, student that one of the enrichment activities that he added to his city was a construction crane. And it was it turned out really cool. If you haven't checked out Minecraft Education Edition, do that. They have amazing 
lessons for all different subject matter and um, they're not all produced by Minecraft but there's some really cool stuff there 